eight days and 500 kilometers. Are you up for the challenge? Between Christmas and New Year's Eve, each year, thousands of cyclists partake in the Rafa's Festive 500, the world's favorite festive cycling event. The challenge has become iconic since its inception in 2010, and almost 240,000 people took part on Strava alone last year. But is the Festive 500 ruining your training? In this video, we're going to take a look at whether the Festive 500 is a great challenge to get stuck into, or whether it's one you should be wary of. Riding 500 kilometers or just over 310 miles across eight days isn't the biggest challenge in the world. It works out to be 62.5 kilometers or 39 miles per day. And over the past decade, countless cyclists around the world have taken on the Festive 500. Some people even challenge themselves to complete it in a single day. But the real challenge of the Festive 500 isn't necessarily the distance, but it's the time of year. It's one of the busiest periods from a social perspective and the weather is crappy and the days are short. Completing the Festive 500 is more of a logistical challenge as it is a physical one. A quick history lesson shows that it all started in the southwest of England with Rafa designer Grey Raven. It's 2009 and England is having a fairy tale white Christmas. Rayburn planned on riding 1,000 kilometers because it seemed like a nice amount. It took this epic first attempt at 1,000 for the designer to realize hey, 500 kilometers was more than enough. The next year brought the first festive 500 and 94 different riders signed up to complete the challenge. Now hundreds of thousands of riders have covered over 130 million kilometers. In theory, it sounds like a great idea. It encourages you to get out on the bike in one of the toughest times of the year. But is it a recipe for disaster? Yes and no. Firstly, despite the title of this video, I have nothing against anyone who signs up and wants to tackle this challenge. It's a great initiative and one that gets people on their bikes at a difficult time of the year. I'm all for that. Plus, committing to the consistency of riding the 500 kilometers is a big deal no matter who you are. So how could it be a bad thing? If you've been training with a target in mind all winter, then suddenly switching it up and aiming for a big endurance block could be counterproductive to your overall goals. Of course, if you were due that big endurance block, then it's a win-win scenario and you can tick two items off your to-do list. Being targeted and consistent in what you do are your two best friends when it comes to achieving your cycling goals. Bouncing around and changing your training won't do you any favors from a physical perspective. However, the biggest thing we often forget when it comes to training is enjoyment. Having fun with your training plan will protect you against the dreaded plateau and spending a few days mixing it up could be exactly what you needed. This challenge was created originally in the Northern Hemisphere and I have no doubt for those of you down under, the weather isn't too much of an issue. You're more worried about your tan lines. But for the rest of us, the weather is without a doubt the biggest challenge when completing the Festive 500. Dressing correctly is the best way of competing with the weather, but the main thing I'm gonna say is be careful. The last thing you want to do is break a collarbone, crashing on dangerous and icy roads because you've had to get the miles in for the challenge. Now, I know Rafa have a great repair system in place, but you don't want to take advantage of it. They've kindly said you can complete the challenge on the turbo trainer and looking at the weather we've had so far this winter, that might not be a bad idea. I know there will be some of you out there thinking that, you know, this is cheating and a little against the spirit of the challenge. But then again, the challenge is whatever you want it to be. Let's go back to the first Festive 500 for a second. Grey Rayburn originally picked 1,000 kilometers as it sounded like a good number, except that it turned out to be too much, so he dropped it to 500. Now, what if you're really fit or an elite cyclist? You might be comfortable riding much further than the average person. Alternatively, 
What if you've only just started riding and you're not used to putting that sort of strain on your body? That 500 might suddenly be a very daunting prospect. Push yourself too hard and you might even walk away from the challenge with an injury. I'd suggest taking a long, hard look at the Festive 500 before you start considering how you can tailor the challenge to your fitness level and your goals. That said, it is a challenge and after all, no challenge should be easy. It's meant to scare you a little bit. You know, a little bit of fear is good. It keeps you on your toes. And once you've ticked it off, that level of satisfaction tastes sweet. But you should do whatever you think is best, whether that's tackling the Festive 500 or sticking to your normal training plan. Whatever you choose, enjoy it. Just be aware, if you complete the 500, you might need to take a little bit more recovery than you usually would, or alter next week's training. When I was a pro, I'd regularly complete that distance across the Christmas period. These days, with family and work commitments, I'll doubt I'll find the time, especially with a little one on its way. Then again, maybe I just need the challenge of the festive 500 to spur me on. What about you? Will you be tackling the challenge? Let me know in the comments below.